We're gonna take you through step by step on how to efficiently and effectively do a clean out. This is how we can get three to four ponds done in a day and 300 plus clean outs done in two months. Welcome back everybody to another video. We're in Naperville, Illinois. You guys have seen quite a bit of this project if you guys have been paying attention to the uh, channel and if you've been a long time viewer. This is a job that we probably did, I, I think four years ago it's been. We've been doing this pond clean out uh, every single year since we built this and we're gonna take you through step by step on how to do a clean out out on, out on this job. For reference, we even have 14 tanks out on this job, so you can just tell how many gallons this pond is. It's a pretty big pond, and the 14 tanks isn't gonna be enough to hold all the water inside this pond. So we're gonna take you through on how to efficiently and effectively do a pond clean out. This is exactly how we do all of our clean outs in the Chicagoland area. This is how we are, can get three to four ponds done in a day, and 300 plus clean outs done in two months. So. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot of information getting tossed at you guys, so giddy up and let's get going. The first thing that we do when we pull up to a clean out is we introduce ourselves to the to the homeowner. So I did this this morning. I went up to the homeowner, introduced ourselves. It's nice to know when we knock on that door and it with the phone call the night before to kind of get as much information as possible from the homeowner and so that they know that we're coming out the next morning because a lot of times with it being springtime, especially up here in the Midwest, people have their electric turned off and their water turned off during the winter time and especially towards the beginning half of clean outs, it's really important to kind of make sure that the electric is on and the water is on because without those two we can't do a clean out we want to make sure that there's a good line of communication between us and the homeowner a lot of times throughout the winter time uh, there could be something wrong that happened with the pond could have been a low edge or they noticed that they were losing water a little bit faster or even lights out so it's nice to know those things kind of ahead of time and just kind of be aware of what's going on. The rest of the guys were moving stuff to the backyard and getting stuff already prepped and that's kind of one of the efficiencies is everybody is always moving and doing something. There is not one person standing around and kind of waiting for the next step. We're gonna go in the back and show you guys what we got going on. All right, we got everything all staged and ready to go. I finally have a second to kind of walk you guys through what we have for equipment wise for our cleanouts. We obviously have our fish tubs, which are right here. These are our 500 gallons collapsible fish tubs that we use on every single clean out. We have our buckets for picking all that debris and muck out of the feature. We bring all that stuff back with us to the shop and then dispose of it in our dumpsters at work. Of course, we got our extension cords because we're working with electric and we always need to be running electric all over the place to uh, access different parts of the pond with our clean out pumps and everything. Wide variety of our garden hoses, which are right here. So we have 25, 50, and 100 footers that we keep with us on all the trucks. Kind of just depending on what we're doing for the day, kind of dictates how much hoses we're gonna use. Obviously with this being such a big feature, we have a little bit more supplies than a typical clean out would use. Moving on, we have our clean out pump. Can't drain a pond without a clean out pump. We have our power washer with our power washer gun because you cannot make a pond clean without a power washer. And then ultimately we have our aerator bag. This uh, holds our aerator. So you can see our aerator, our aerator sitting right here with our airline tubing and we have a net to go on top of the tank because when we're working with fish and they get put in a new environment, they do tend to jump and kind of be crazy sometimes. So we wanna make sure that they're all nice, nice and safe by putting a net on there. That way they cannot jump out of the tank. There's a little bit of detox in there to throw some detox in there because we are using tap water and we're gonna be adding that tap water into the future. So we wanna make sure that the fish all night are all nice and safe and happy. We got our clean out hoses and uh, pretty much about it. I know I thought there was a little bit more, but no, that's, that's, that's all we got going on. This can all fit in the back of a pickup truck. Obviously with this clean out, all this stuff cannot fit in the back of a pickup truck. It takes two vans to come out here to do this feature just because we need the manpower and all the tanks. You can see we have 14 tanks out here and that's a lot of stuff that we have to move just at this job. We have, let me do, let me do the math video. 14 tanks, we have four clean out pumps. We have to have three clean out hoses just discharging out um, into the front yard because that's where, we're, where we have to discharge a lot of this water. We have four clean out pumps going, so we have uh, all the pumps right now are discharging into the tanks because we are trying to drain this pond as quickly as possible. Maybe wondering why we have two wetlands. So there's one sitting here, 
and there's one sitting off to the uh, other side by the bridge. And that's just because logistically, it did not uh, make sense to have one big wetland in this yard. It just didn't fit and we didn't have the uh, yard space to pull it off. We dropped the pump down in this snorkel, which is sitting right here. And we got, a, we got a hose going and filling up one of the tanks. So that's all completely clean water, fresh water going down into a tank. So that way, as it's draining, by the time we get everything kind of set up, this will be drained and we could start throwing another pump down in the pond taking some of that water to flush all of this debris, all this organic matter. You can see all of this kind of sludge type debris is what's settling on top and this is what's um, in the, inside this wetland. We're gonna go through and flush all this out, making it nice and clean and keeping it nice and clear for another season. And this is exactly why we want to do a spring clean out. In nature, you have a free flowing system where that river just kind of gets flowing it and it really pushes all that debris out of there. With a closed system, we really don't have that. So with us kind of coming in here, draining the water down, power washing everything, giving it a good rinse, it gets everything nice and clean and ready for the season. That way it can work efficiently and properly as planned. All right, so we knocked on the door. We came into the backyard. We assessed what we have going on. We started pulling all the equipment back here. We started draining the pond. We have one of the wetlands cleaned. While we were cleaning the wetland, the other guys were coming down here and they were starting to pick all the debris that they could around the feature. So you can see Tyler behind me is going through, picking a lot of that debris in the pond because the pond is low enough that we can, he can get in there and start picking all that debris that he can pick by his hand. Connor was right now going through all this and getting all this done. Right now we're gonna go down to the negative edge and show you what we got going on down there. This area is a big 3,000 gallon basement that I'm sitting on top of. We have this waterfall dumps down on top of this and then this water travels across this gravel, dumps down into these aqua blocks. How we have a skimmer in a pond, this is pretty much the skimmer for our bigger size ponds. We have those big negative edge uh, type deals. It uh, um, skims all the debris off the pond and it deposits this right in this area. The upkeep on these things are very crucial because if these get clogged, these can cause big problems by causing a leak because it's gonna drive this water up in this area. When we came in here, all this was all caked in debris just from all the trees and all the leaf debris kind of getting stirred up within the springtime. It was actually causing a leak. There is an overflow back in that corner, back on my left-hand shoulder. And it, this water line was so high up that it was actually getting so high where it was getting into that overflow, causing all this water to hit that overflow and go into the um, drainage system. So what it can, we came in here, we pulled all this gravel away, we power washed all this gravel on the aqua blocks, and now we're going through and picking all this debris. You can see all of this stuff. All this stuff, we're trying to pick as much of it as possible and get it into these buckets and out of here because you do not want this getting down into these aqua blocks. There's definitely a lot of moving parts going on out here at this uh, clean out. For the last two hours, we've spent running around making sure everything's good to go. We're making sure tanks are not overflowing. We're making sure uh, fish are getting taken out of the pond. We're making sure that pumps aren't getting clogged. Levi's power washing. There's just a lot going on right now. Levi power washes the entire bottom section. Started at the bottom, kind of power washed his way out of here. Then now he's up in the waterfalls right now. Starting on the top section, kind of going on that perimeter of that pond, pushing all that debris and all that algae to the bottom of the pond. The good thing about this pond is that the bottom is actually like a slate bottom. So there's no gravel, so it's gonna be nice and easy for pushing debris off to one side, collecting it, getting into those buckets, and getting it out of here. Connor and Tyler right now are picking all the fish out. So we pulled the fish out of the feature, we don't want to be chasing them out when the pond is 100% full and uh, filled with water. We wait until there's about a foot of water left in the bottom of the pond for us getting down in there. We can stand down there, we can catch the fish nice and easy, hand them off to somebody sitting outside the pond. They put those inside the tub to keep the fish nice and safe and happy. And then after that, we drain the rest of that water to the stream or wherever we're dumping it into. What we got left to do is finish power washing. Once he's done with that, where it's gonna be all hands on deck. 
uh, rinsing the rest of the pond down, making sure the pumps are all nice and free of debris. Because that's the biggest thing. Once you have a pond of this magnitude and caked with debris, those pumps are bound to be uh, caught up with debris and stuff like that. So you unfortunately have to have somebody kind of babysit those pumps so that way the water can uh, get out of here and move freely uh, and the water's not pulling up in the bottom of the pond. It's only 10 o'clock and we're already this far into it. We're making great timing, so hopefully uh, it's gonna go smoothly the rest of the day. It is currently 3.15, little past than I thought we were gonna be at this point by now, but it's all in the attention to detail. Right now we have the pond rinsed down. It is currently filling. This basin is 98% filled up. As we're filling up, now we're gonna go pull the tanks down as we finish one tank and dump it in. We're gonna uh, fold it back down and bring it to the truck and start bringing everything out back to the truck. And then the only thing that is left to do is to put our ion gen and auto doser in for our maintenance package and then to install our pumps. This is a good time too. When you guys pull those pumps out uh, of the basins, you wanna, uh, as you're putting them back in, you wanna make sure that they run. So what I do is I uh, go up to them, I plug them in, make sure that they run, make sure that the propeller is spinning. And then I also go through is obviously I unplug them first and then I go through and I make sure that Inside here, the propeller, there's there's sometimes debris that gets inside of this area here. You gotta go through, just pick all that stuff out, make sure that it's free of debris and make sure there's no gravel or anything like that inside of there. Because if a piece of gravel is in there, it could um, wear out that pump prematurely. So you just wanna make sure you're just kinda doing preventative maintenance out on these pumps as they're outside of the water and they're easy to access. So all I gotta do is just pop these bad boys back down into the vault cover them back up and then we are good to go in this area and then we're just going to be working our way outside this feature and getting all the tanks and hoses back to the truck. Pond filled and the reservoir filled. We're gonna head to the next clean out and show you guys how to do a pondless waterfall. Hey everyone, it's Haley with Aquascape. If you remember me from before, I'm the maintenance coordinator for our, our team here. So what I wanted to show you a little bit about what goes into the office work of our clean out season. So the most important thing is all of our different package levels, getting people signed up and paid so they can get on our schedule. Currently, we have 294 people signed up for cleanouts and maintenance packages. And that most important thing that I pay attention to is how many man hours do we think that is? So right now we're at 2,591. I did the math on how many guys we have, how many days we can work this season. The maximum man hours we could do is 2,900. So we've got a couple hundred to go before we hit that number. So I think we're looking pretty good. So you might be wondering, how did we get to this point? So that started with us sending out our pricing information to all of our past customers people that we've done work for before that we've made those numbers for and usually it's somewhere around like 25% of our signups come directly from sending that to them they're like yes this is what I want they call us we get them signed up and super fast and simple the rest of it we have to go back and call people directly and reach out again and again to make sure that they don't forget to sign up or um, they're out of town when we sent it and didn't go back to it. So we just want to make sure we touch base with all of our customers to make sure that we don't miss anyone. 
And the most important thing when you're having those phone calls is treat this package sign up the same way you would a consultation. When you're talking to these customers, you're not just getting them a clean out, you're not just getting them uh, visits throughout the year, you're designing a package level for them for their feature and their maintenance needs. So keep that in mind when you're signing people up that you wanna get that catered to them specifically. But that's enough about the office, let's send you back on site. You guys just saw us clean out a pond, now it's time for us to show you guys how to clean out a pondless. So let's head to the back, we're gonna set everything up and then I'm gonna walk you guys through what equipment we all need for a pondless clean out. Well, this is all the supplies and equipment that we need for this pond that's clean out. You can see that I have my power washer to my left. We're gonna use that to power wash all this gunk and debris out of the pondless, make it nice and clean. We have a couple clean out hoses out here and the reason for that is this basin's big enough where we could use some of this water to rinse down and speed things up when we're rinsing uh, after power washing all the uh, muck and debris out of this feature. Also, we have our garden hose already set up so we have one hooked up to the house already we have another one um, an additional one just because we're going to find another spigot and get that one ran we have our power washer hose and our power washer gun and then we also have some buckets to pick all that debris so the next thing that we got to do is start picking all this debris and start draining this water so we can start power washing This is all this organic matter and we do not want this in the future, but we're doing the same thing in this pond. Let's making sure this thing is nice and clean for when we go through and start it up. But most importantly, it's just easier to do it now instead of after we power wash, because when I power wash, it's gonna turn all this stuff into little tiny pieces. And it's gonna, it's just gonna make our lives a little bit harder uh, cleaning the pumps out and just it's gonna take a lot longer rinsing. Another thing that we do before we start power washing is we turn the lights on. The reason for that is it's a good time for when we're going through and picking all the debris we can kind of see what lights are on and what lights are off. And then obviously once we're power washing, we're hitting every single inch of this pond list. So we're gonna find a light out. So it's just a good time to get that stuff on. So that as you're power washing, you take mental notes. All right, we got everything picked. The lights are on and we are ready to start power washing. We have these turbo nozzles that you'll see in the video that there's a little ball bearing inside this tip and so it just spins around with that water and it makes like a circular motion with the water. And instead of a uh, pinpointing jet, this gets more of a surface area and uh, moves more of the debris off the rocks because we're not looking to put holes inside the liner. So I'm gonna get this thing started. We're gonna start power washing. Whole thing power wash right now we're going through and rinsing we have the first uh section of the stream all rinsed so i have the garden hose nozzle with me and i have two garden hoses behind me and the reason for that is because i'm pushing all that water into the pump if i was just to sit here and with the fire hose nozzle and move all this stuff around it would just kind of, it would take a little bit of time to kind of get going into the pump but with this garden hoses behind me they kind of push and move that stuff down into the cleanup pump and get that uh sucked out of here when we're rinsing we see a lot of times where people kind of go through here and just do a little bit of, just kind of sit in one spot and do this. This is not gonna do anything for when you're rinsing. Rinsing comes in for when, when you come out down in here, and you really move all this debris out of the way. You can see how much debris I'm, I'm moving up and getting into suspension, moving down into the pump. And then I'm coming through here, and I'm making sure at that, that fire hose nozzle's agitating the water just enough just to get it moving off that way. So you can tell. Just by going like this, it's gonna be a lot cleaner. Once we get this pooling area done and rinsed, we're gonna move that pump down there and just continue our way down, working our way down to the feature.
Well, we have cleaned out a pond and a pondless. The only thing that we have left is to clean out a fountain skip. Today we have three small little basalts out here. They are very simple. It is all it pretty much takes is picking all the debris around it, power washing the basalts, getting them all nice and clean, and then checking the lights out here. There are three one watt spotlights out here. There's one in each corner shining up on these. All three of them work, so that's all good to go. So the only thing that we all have to do is to drain this basin down, power wash it, rinse it, and then we are all good to go. You guys, Fortunately, I've been able to see a variety of water features and techniques. We clean 300 plus ponds in a couple months and we see over 500 ponds a year between our maintenance department and construction doing uh, features. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Please feel free to comment down below on what you guys liked. Let me know what you guys learned. If you guys learned anything, we'll see you on the next one.